Hey folks, today I wanted to talk to you about building a real bluegrass break. So the first thing that we're gonna do is find a simple melody. We're gonna turn that into Carter Scratch, and then we're gonna turn that into a more modern bluegrass break with a bunch of embellishments and all of that good stuff. We will go into all the details in just a second. First, I wanted to remind you all that my new record did come out um, earlier this month. I would love it if you would go check it out. It's on all major streaming services. It's called Trader. My name is Marcel Ardance. Uh, definitely check it out. It's got a lot of great musicians on it. Uh, Jack Devereaux, Hank Smith, uh, Maddie Willer, all wonderful players. We're really proud of what we did. It's weird. It's got drums on it. If you like Newgrass Revival, if you like progressive bluegrass, you might like it. All right, so the first thing we need to do is pick a song. Let me grab this little list of bluegrass songs. How about? Um, I've done this with a lot of students. Shout out to all the students that I've done this with before. If you've taken a lesson with me about this, you will immediately recognize my methodology. But let's let's see if I can find one that uh, that would just be real standard, no surprises. How about Nine Pound Hammer? Let's do Nine Pound Hammer. Hell yeah. Here's, here's what we're doing. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna try to figure out the melody. I'm doing this in the key of G. Hopefully you've already heard this song before. Hopefully you've heard the melody. Maybe you even know the chord changes. All that stuff would be excellent. I'm just gonna hop right in right now though. So I know, well, this nine pound hammer. I'm gonna write these like this. I'm writing all of these rests for a reason. It's a little too heavy. Buddy for my size. Buddy for my size. And then there's kind of these blue notes right here in the melody. I always write it like this. Um, I don't know if this is more like Tony Rice or who it's more like, but I always hear this, roll on, right, roll on. Then I hear a blue note right here, buddy, buddy. Minor third for sure. Can I roll on? And then I hear another uh, blue note phrase right here. When the wheels won't go. <laughs> Uh, I guess I didn't find a G before I started writing this, so who knows what key I'm singing it in right now, but uh, in any case, that's kind of how I feel that melody in my head. All right, so here's my super quick, super rough uh, notation of the melody. Well, this nine pound hammer is a little too heavy for my size, buddy for my size. Something like that. Like I said, you might have a slightly different interpretation and that's completely fine. It's not gonna hurt anything that we do later. Um, like I said, this melody, a little shaky, right? When we have the break written up to this point, and uh, this is why I wrote all these quarter note rests. This is why this is coming up. Now I can turn it into a Carter Scratch style break. I'm gonna show this to you in two different ways. How about, let's say it that way. Have a second guitar player. This second line down here would be my second guitar player. They would probably be playing this boom chuck style rhythm. So they'd be holding down a G chord and they'd be playing this kind of thing underneath me. And then moving on, they would do that for all the other chords. Time-lapse mode, activate. Now the way that I'm going to look at this is almost like it, it's a uh, like a transparency or like there's a relief here. So to turn this into Carter style, I can see that there's melody notes here, but there's nothing right here. So I can take these strums from down here, and they can go here. You see that? How it's like a good, like it's like a transparency. This isn't perfect. It's not going to work all the time. But this is the basic idea. I can snag this bass note and put it here. I'm putting them in the holes to try to you know, make this whole thing feel like it's an arrangement that makes more sense. Now you can see as I do this, it's ruining the lyrics, so unfortunately, goodbye lyrics, but that's okay. I think that we've proven that we know the song. You guys know the simple melody now. If you need to practice that, you can go back and listen to it. But you can see what I'm doing here, right? Saw a big gap right there. I could just take some of the rhythm and I could pop it in. Let's do it for the next line, All right? So I can see a bunch of holes right here. I can just draw my rhythm in there. Normally I'm doing this in my head, right? Normally I'm not doing this on a computer with pencil and paper, but I want you to see how the process works because that's really important. And that is the very last one. So I'm gonna turn off our rhythm track down there so we can just see our break again. And now this is a full Carter scratch or Carter style um, arrangement. This isn't strictly exactly how Mother Maybell Carter would have played it. I know that she had more specific tendencies. This is our kind of generalized version of that. 
Uh, yeah, I, so I don't love this bass note. I know that I can also play this uh, D note over the G chord. I think that might be the choice since I haven't gotten in a D bass note yet. Um, maybe that makes sense. Let's keep going. I think this will be okay. I kind of like that. Cool. So here is our Carter Scratch style arrangement. Let me play it for you real quick. <laughs> Now let's try to make this into a more advanced break. And this is, this is my favorite. This is when I really get to have fun. There, there's, there's a couple kind of guiding principles that, that are really gonna help you while you do this. And um, I think that I'm just gonna get into it and I'm gonna try to show you them as I go. I think it makes more sense if you see it in action rather than if I try to show you them all at the beginning. It doesn't really make sense. So the first thing you wanna know is where big phrases end because where big phrases end, we're gonna wanna put G runs. And there's kind of a cliche thing that you're looking for. Um, and it's this right here. Basically, I have a whole empty measure of G. When I say empty, I mean only rhythm stuff, right? Only our boom track now. Um, and I also have a G on beat one of this measure. So empty measure plus nothing right here. And this is my moment to fit in that Lester flat G run. If you're not familiar with uh, classic bluegrass licks, this is one to learn. This is like one of the most important phrases. You use it in your rhythm playing all the time. It's basically just a pentatonic scale with a minor third, but it is a really common lick. So if I scroll down further, I will see that situation again. Actually, here's two empty measures of G stuff. So once again, I know that I can fit in my Lester flat G run. Now, it could be a variation of the G run. Doesn't have to be the exact one. So why don't I leave this one uh, kind of normal, maybe for now, and I'm gonna I'm gonna add a little a little zhuzh onto this one. Uh, how about da 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 ba da 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 da? We'll do one like that. We'll put slides and hammer ons on both of those, why not? Going back up to the top, let's start here. I want to take every tiny piece of melody I can, and I want to try to infuse it with some more classic bluegrass characteristics. So, for instance, I'm going to look at just this phrase right here. I have this kickoff phrase, it's da ba doo da dum, right? And all it's doing is leading up to this G note. How can I take this and just make it a little more bluegrassy? This one's actually not too bad because there is kind of a template for this, right? We see a lot of kickoffs like this in vocal song breaks. If you haven't watched any of my how to play or any of my live transcription videos, all of those would help you, right? <laughs> I transcribe a lot of guitar breaks from vocal tunes and almost all of them have a kickoff like this. Rest on beat one, some kind of leading phrase either into the root, the third or the fifth. In this case, we're going into the root. And I want to make a phrase like this. Uh, how about that? Buddha, da, 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 da. Yeah, I like that. So let's take, let's take this, how about? So right here, I have a phrase that's really just about this G note, right? G over and over again. Uh, these strums were just kind of left over from the Carter scratch for now. What can I do to have a lot of G in there, right? How can I really emphasize that G is important? Let me give you a couple options. I could, number one, I could play it with a drone. Droning this way, I end up playing a G on the D string and an open G string. That's cool. But it could also be uh, something else, right? It doesn't even have to be a drone or necessarily even a slide, right? It could just be two notes, right? That could be my fill. Or yet yet another option. What if it was what if it was like a cross picking thing? Well maybe we'll do the slide and then we'll do it up into a cross picking thing. This seems like something that uh, I would hear Billy Strings do, for instance. Does that make sense? I'm just trying to take all of the principles that I've learned from all the other bluegrass playing that I've done, and I'm trying to keep that G note the, the center of focus, but I'm trying to find different ways to do that with different bluegrass concepts. So in this case, I think I want to do a mixture. I don't want to start out too crazy, and you know, honestly, in my own playing, I don't do a ton of cross picking. So why don't I start with the drone, then I will do the single note variation, and then let's grab some of the Billy stuff. So right here, think about the directionality of this line, right? We got this line that's going like this. Right? Any of 
the licks that I know that that involve some kind of spice around that third going down to the root note are going to do the job right here. You could pick lots of things. You basically have a measure, fill it up. What do you want to do? I think last time I did this with a student, I did this little Billy Strings uh, style lick. So let's do that. I know you guys love your Billy Strings, man. By the way, I say Billy Strings just because he's the kind of modern player that's adopted this, but this is a little bit of a Doc Watson lick. We normally associate these uh, sort of dirty third licks where you have the minor third going to the major third and it's across two different strings. We normally associate that more with Doc Watson, specifically over the C chord. He does that a lot. Great, let's keep going. Um, so right here, I have this, this kind of really nice uh, Carter scratch moment, right? Where I have this melody note, strum, melody note, strum. I love that. I don't want to ruin that. So um, I think I'm going to turn this into an arpeggio, which I'm ashamed to say, I think is how I wrote this last time I did it with a student too. We got to break form a little bit. All right, so we got this nice break up to this point. Let me play it for you. Hope you can start to hear some of that more like modern bluegrass tendency that's kind of creeping in here. I like the idea of this measure, you know, to recap here, my melody is just these three notes. Da, da, bum. So the words are like for my size, buddy, for my size, right? So for my size, that's what's happening. And I think that we could just take this over with an improvisational line. This is kind of something that Tony Rice does in Blue Ridge Cabin Hall. And if we took a line like that, I think that's, I think that's nice. I think that we should, um, maybe uh, do do a quick callback to the, the drone thing from earlier. So let's do the drone uh, here, lower down on this D note. So it's similar to this up here, but now we're doing it down here. And I think that would be kind of a, you know, kind of like a cute joke. This, uh, this phrase is really similar to what was originally written up here. So I bet I could just take this and this will do that same job. And that would be a nice way for us to finish out the second line. Remember, we don't have to do anything else because this is kind of already done, right? We already filled in some of the gaps with the Carter style. We put the Lester flat G run there. We have our nice melody here at the end. Let's give it a shot. Just our, our first half here. <laughs> I'm loving this. This is a nice one. Okay, so let's try to pick some different things for our next time through. When I say next time through, I mean these are kind of the same chord changes and a similar melody. We're just tackling it again. I think that this first line, let's leave that one alone. I think, I think I'm gonna let that one be influenced by how I play this second line. Now, the last time we came up against this line, we did kind of that Billy Strings, Doc Watson thing. I think I wanna do something similar to that, but I wanna do it with, with hammer-ons. So let's do Dirty Third again, but let's do it with hammer-ons. So same lick, right? It's B flat going to B, but I wanna execute on the on the concept differently. I wanna do it more like that, um, which is kind of, a, uh, kind of a classic banjo lick. Normally banjo players will do it, you know, during a G chord though, we're doing it leading to a C chord, which is kind of interesting, but I think it works. I think we can turn this into kind of like a, like a recycled G run kind of thing too. Like we'll go down and we'll lead it back up kind of in a, in a G run fashion. I think that'll be nice and interesting. What do we want to do over here on our C chord? Maybe we'll, we'll create a nice line starting up on this note and we'll lead it down to that C in the next measure. Uh, ooh, I don't have enough time. Actually, I like it like this. Sometimes, you know, little mistakes, they create interesting lines. <laughs> I want to create like a little kick off phrase, kind of like we used in the beginning for right here. But maybe I'll change that note so it leads to the right spot. And then let's just finish off the last line while we're here because we're already so close. I'm going to alter the timing just a little bit on this phrase. Remember, this is more or less how we were singing it. I already like it. I think it's cool. I think I'll take our G run and I'll kind of invert it. All of these too. I know this probably seems like a lot. You're like, oh yeah, you know, Marcel's just finishing the whole thing now and he's not telling me what he's doing. But so much of this is just language that we see in famous bluegrass breaks. So if you're not listening to a lot of bluegrass, if you're not already reading a bunch of bluegrass transcriptions or you're not transcribing them on your own, well, yeah, of course it seems totally shocking. But if you've read a handful of Tony Rice transcriptions, language like this, like this, like this, like this, it's not gonna shock you, you've seen it. I would say that even if you've just seen the Blue Ridge Cabin Home Break, which you should check out if you haven't, it's the first track on the Bluegrass album band. It's got a great kind of classic Tony Rice solo on it. Even if you've just seen that transcription, a lot of this would make more sense to you. 
I think maybe we should, um, after all that Tony Rice talk, I think maybe we should put kind of a bigger uh, TR tribute lick right here. Let's do this lick. He does it um, He does it in Blue Railroad Train. He does it in uh, Likes of Me. He does it in, uh, <laughs> what else does he do it in? He does it in a handful of tunes. Um, and it's just this little section here. Yeah, cool. It kind of undoes the work that I did previously right here, but I think it's good. I like it. This is kind of a Larry Sparks G-Run, um, or at least I associate it with him for whatever reason. Uh, I'm not saying he invented it or anything, but that kind of inverted G-Run. I don't know, maybe I transcribed a couple pieces that he does that in but i just kind of think about it as a larry sparks thing that's our whole thing before i play it for you i'm gonna do one more thing to help you out i'm gonna go through all of these sections and i'm gonna try to label the things that i use so right here this is a kickoff phrase normally has a rest on beat one or kind of an insignificant note on beat one followed by this kind of establishing phrase leading to beat one of the next measure now right here to fill time i used uh, a drone there's my drone right there. Here, this is the dirty third, right? Anything that has the minor third going to the major third of the current chord over and over again, we think of as the dirty third. Um, right here, I'm using more rhythm playing, right? I'm using a boom check, a little bit of a, an arpeggio that we also see in rhythm playing. So, right, I'm gonna call that boom check. Um, this is, uh, this is a, a, a lick. I said that when I played it, right? This is a Tony Rice lick from Blue Ridge Cabin Home. He plays that in like measure three of that song or of that break. Um, right here, we have the tiniest little hints of cross picking, just the, the tiniest little bit of it, tiniest little mm, kind of thing. Um, it's not a great example. I didn't get everything in this break, but at least it's a clue. Uh, here, this should start looking familiar because this is another kickoff right here. And this, you can see this is kind of an unimportant note, right? It's, a, it's the root note of this current chord. It kind of disappears and you really hear the kickoff again. Right here in this measure, we have a G run, that Lester flat G run. Um, right here, right? I have the boom check, but then I'm playing just the straight melody. Right, in my mind, that's what the melody is. That's the what we wrote down in our simple melody. So it's kind of a split measure right there. Um, this last one, we're doing, once again, kind of a split. We're starting out with a pretty straight melody, and then we're finishing with kind of a, a, a G run-ish. Um, right here, this is again the dirty third. Over here, um, this was kind of a lick that I constructed. So again, we'll call this lick. It has little to do with the melody. Uh, once again, this should look real familiar. This is one of our kickoff phrases, again, leading off to the next measure. Over here, here's another lick. It's a Tony Rice lick. Um, believe it or not, this measure is melody. This is how we wrote out our simple melody. And this is another G-run, be it inverted, kind of a strange G-run. Um, and our very last measure is just more rhythm playing. This is more boom chuck. So you can see that almost measure by measure, there is a new approach that I'm applying to try to decorate this thing. <laughs> it's kind of funny to look at it like that, but it's true. Um, this is this is what's happening. Anyway, this, this is enough talking. I got to play it for you, finally. Now, I really hope that helped you understand the process, right? So to put it simply, make sure you know that simple melody. Then make sure you know the chords. Make sure you can put them together and make a Carter style break. And then after that, look at really tiny chunks of the melody, almost measure by measure. Don't worry about the bar lines too much, basically about four beats though. And try to decorate that piece of melody with everything that you know. Drones, double stops, hammer-ons and pull-offs, Blue note concepts like the dirty third or the dominant seventh. Uh, think about like classic licks like G runs, cross picking, a any of those concepts, right, are gonna help you decorate that melody. And when you get good enough at this, you've seen the same circumstances over and over again that you can start doing this on the fly. You can do it on the spot. And uh, maybe this helps you see how that's achievable because it really is. I'm not messing with you. You can do this. Uh, and this is how it's done. This is how we do it. 
Anyway, folks, I hope you like this lesson from me, the biggest, baddest Billy Goat in the barnyard. Please check out the website, lessonswithmarcel.com. All of these tabs will be available on there. Also, please check out the new record, Trader. Uh, it's available on Spotify, Apple Music, all of your normal streaming services. Uh, we have physical copies for sale on the website. If you're into that, they also make excellent coasters. Uh, <laughs> and I will see you all next time for another lesson. See y'all later.